And at number 10, Crispin Glover. Things felt off about this interview almost as soon as Glover walked on stage. He was wearing a wig, skin tight pinstripe pants, platform shoes, and huge glasses. Things only got worse once the two started talking, and it was clear something was very wrong with Glover. At one point, Glover even started reading out negative stories about himself that were written in LA Weekly. Then the tone shifted, and Glover tried to challenge Letterman to an arm wrestling match to prove he's strong. Then he randomly kicked towards Letterman and almost hit him in the face. Letterman tried to defuse the situation and leave by saying, quote, I have to check on the top 10 list. After that interview, Glover was written off as crazy. And at number 9, Charles Rocket. Charles Rocket was primed to be a breakout star of SNL in 1981. Fans of the show called him the perfect mix between Chevy Chase and Bill Murray, and his segments on the show were adored by everyone. However, his career completely imploded after he accidentally said the F word during the live broadcast. Every cast member at the time knew how important it was to never swear on TV, as it would get you fired. That's exactly what happened to Rocket. He went from being one of the best cast members of that time to basically nobody, and his career trickled off slowly slowly after he was fired. In at number 8, Brian Williams. Brian Williams was one of the top news anchors ever, filling the coveted nightly news spot on NBC. He was even so well respected that he was frequently a guest on SNL and 30 Rock, but that all changed when it was exposed that Williams was a liar. The lie first started back in 2003, and he basically claimed that he was riding in a military helicopter that was forced to the ground while flying over Iraq. The plane was hit by an RPG and almost crashed. He kept repeating the story over and over for years after, even mentioning it on late night with David Letterman in 2013. But when the world found out that the whole story was a lie, everyone was shocked and felt they couldn't trust him again. He ended up getting a six month unpaid suspension from NBC and his career took a massive hit. He never came back to his original role and was demoted to a smaller network. And at number 7, Abel Ferreira. Conan O'Brien recently revealed who his worst guest ever was, and it was none other than Abel Ferreira. Anybody familiar with the interview definitely knows why. O'Brien spoke about it on the Armchair Expert podcast, where he showed the Ferreira came on the show against his will and made it clear that he didn't want to be there. Conan went on to say the Ferreira even left the building right before the show was about to start, and Conan's staff had to track him down and drag him to the studio. O'Brien estimates the director was intoxicated throughout the discussion. This made the interview cringy and hard to watch, but it's now a fan favorite. Conan called it quote, compelevision, meaning it was so bad the viewer couldn't stop watching. It's so infamous William Defoe even commented on it during his own interview with Conan. And at number 6, Sinead O'Connor. Sinead O'Connor was at the peak of her career when she was asked to perform on SNL, but the live performance didn't go as planned and her statements had serious repercussions. O'Connor performed on SNL in October of 1992, but SNL was probably wishing that she didn't, because O'Connor ended the performance by holding up a picture of Pope John Paul II, ripping it up, and stating quote, fight the real enemy, obviously offending millions of people. The show quickly cut after they saw what happened, but the damage was already done and tons of angry calls came flooding in. One audience member even tried to assault O'Connor and had to be removed by security. Not only was O'Connor banned from SNL, her career never really recovered. Halfway number 5, Ashley Simpson. This is one of those accidents that sadly ruined a career. While Ashley was on SNL to perform, she did one song that went off without a hitch, but her second song caused an infamous moment the internet will never forget. When the music started, the vocals for the track that she sang before started to play, making it incredibly clear clear that she was lip syncing. Nobody knew what to do, so her band just kept playing while she danced around the stage and didn't sing a word. In the days that followed, the singer was attacked in the media for lip syncing, which is especially bad on an all live show. After the incident, she tried to set the record straight and explain why she lip synced. She told MTV that she lost her voice because of acid reflux, and instead of cancelling her appearance, she thought it was better for everyone if she just faked it. I'm sure she regrets it in hindsight. And at number 4, Prince Andrew. Following accusations that Prince Andrew had close ties to Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, the public demanded answers about why they had seen each other so often and why there was photo evidence of them together. Prince Andrew decided to do an interview with BBC discussing everything, and it was a complete train wreck. When asked if he was close with Epstein, he claimed, quote, it would be a stretch to say that he was ever close friends with Epstein, and claimed that he was only ever plus one to Ghislaine. However, there are records Andrew visited Epstein after his prison release in 2010. He also said that Epstein quote conducted himself in a manner unbecoming, to which the reporter responded, unbecoming? To which Andrew replied, yep, I'm sorry, I'm being polite. Lastly, Prince Andrew claimed he didn't sleep with Virginia Roberts because she said he was sweating, and apparently he had a condition after the war that caused him not to sweat. 
And at number three, Jim Cramer. Jim Cramer is famous for being the kooky host of Mad Money, a show that talks about the stock market and even gives tips about which stocks to buy. But after the 2008 crash, everyone was wondering how much Cramer knew that he didn't tell to the public on his show. Shortly after the crash, Cramer appeared on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart and completely destroyed him. Stewart pushed Cramer to reveal that he knew what the banks were doing leading up to the crash, but didn't warn anyone. Stewart even aired a clip showing Cramer telling his audience that Bear Stearns was in good shape right before it tanked. After this, Kramer's reputation took a major hit and people couldn't trust him to give accurate information. And at number two, Kelly Osborne. Kelly Osborne got tons of heat after she made an incredibly insensitive comment about Latinos on The View in 2015. While the panel was discussing Donald Trump's hateful comments about Latinos, Osborne said, quote, If you kick every Latino out of this country, then who is going to be cleaning your toilet, Donald Trump? You know what I mean? After a shocked reaction from the crowd, she backtracked, adding, quote, I didn't mean it like that. Come on, I would never mean it like that. I'm not part of this argument. One of her hosts, Michelle Collins, tried to help her out by asking, Adding, quote, I think what you're trying to say is that Trump probably relies on the people that he's insulting. These comments have haunted Kelly ever since. And finally, number one, Jennifer Gardner. Of course, Jennifer Gardner's career is doing just fine, but she was incredibly embarrassed while she was on The Late Show with Conan O'Brien. Jennifer was promoting a new movie she was in where she was a secret agent doing tons of stunts. The pair started talking about these stunts and Conan asked if she had snuck anywhere. Jennifer quickly replied that snuck is not a word and sneaked is the actual word to say, even calling out the fact that Conan had a degree from Harvard and seemingly didn't know that. However, after they came back from commercial break, Conan brought out the dictionary and proved that snuck is a word. It seems that sneaked is the proper term, however snuck has been popular since the 19th century and now both are recognized. So that's all for the list guys, please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Before I go, I'm going to shout out some comments from celebrities who destroyed their careers on Late Night Shows Part 1. Three Sisters in Wine said, you obviously don't know who Andy Dick is, no one had any respect for him in the first place. Literally half the comments in this comment section are just roasting Andy Dick, I clearly don't know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know everyone hated him. <laughs> then James said, wow I'm surprised Michael Richards is like that, I would have thought he was a very chill guy being so funny. Yeah same, I get definitely a shock I think to really anybody that watched him. The Grandma Sandy said, Said, I don't know who was the worst. Um, yeah, I have no idea. Clearly, uh, Andy Dick, because <laughs> literally everyone was commenting about him. Number 10 on this list is JLo's and Alex Rodriguez's breakup. After four years together and an engagement, the pair cut ties and went their separate ways earlier this year. Now, the breakup itself, it seemed rather amicable on the surface. They both said, We will continue to work together and support each other on our shared businesses and projects. We wish the best for each other and one another's children. Out of respect for them, the only other comment we have to say is thank you to everybody who has sent kind words and support. So all of that honestly seems really nice. However, it didn't take Lopez very long to move on from A-Rod and go back to an old flame in Ben Affleck. Fans have speculated if there was potentially something going on between them prior to the breakup, but nothing of significance has gone to proving that. Meanwhile, A-Rod is still recovering from the loss. He's been posting a lot more on his Instagram and what fans believe is an effort to make J-Lo jealous. He has also been captioning things like, I've fallen and I can't get up and I'm good with that. But I'm not totally sure if you are though, Alex, because the day that the breakup was announced, he posted a video with Coldplay's Fix You playing in the background as he shared photos of him and Lopez very much in love. The super amicable joint breakup that was portrayed may have been a lot more one-sided than we initially thought. Number nine on this list is the conflict that had arisen from Prince Harry and Meghan Markle with the royal family. The couple now lives in California far from the reaches of the British crown. They no longer live near their relative royals due to some pretty bad blood that has gone down in the family over the past several years. In 2018, Meghan and Harry, they got married and they were immediately on the cover of every tabloid one could think of. What we weren't aware of though was that there was a little bit of trouble in paradise. The pair eventually stepped down from their royal duties as they felt increasingly ostracized from the other royals. A very close family friend came out and said, there is so much bad blood in that family, it's toxic. Over this past year, Harry has apparently tried to make contact with his father, but has said that he's been cut out completely. His phone calls often go on straight to voicemail. It seems that the bad blood is still very thick and that even a move to California hasn't fixed the underlying problems that the royal family has. Number eight on this list is less of a scandal and more of like a what? 
Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis were on Dax Shepard's podcast having an interview when they said on that show that they don't bathe their kids until they can see dirt on them. Like, what? Like, how often do your kids have dirt on them? I can't imagine it's that much. This wasn't the end of this little tidbit of information though, because Kristen Bell decided that she wanted to weigh in on the pressing issue. She came out and said, and I quote, I'm a big fan of waiting for the stink. Once you catch a whiff, that's biology's way of letting you know you need to clean it up. There's a red flag. Honestly, it's just bacteria. Once you get bacteria, you gotta be like, get in the tub or shower, end quote. So I hear you with that, Kristen, like I do, but I feel like I'm not the weird one for saying that having a regularly scheduled showering time is kind of the norm. I mean, at least the kids are probably loving this, like they barely have to bathe. Number seven on this list is the pettiest move in history by Conor McGregor. Conor has been in the media a lot recently, but it hasn't been for his fighting prowess. It has been for various allegations that really put his character into question. One of these allegations was an assault charge that he actually pleaded guilty to. Back in 2019 in an Irish pub, McGregor sucker punched a man in the back of his head as the man was drinking his whiskey. Clearly they had had a verbal altercation, but it didn't need to go to a physical place. Even though that was two years ago and McGregor was clearly in the wrong, he hasn't let it go. In fact, in 2021, Connor returned to that same pub that the incident happened at, but this time with a big fat check. He bought that Irish pub from the owner and directly after the news broke that he did this, he tweeted out, yeah, and your man's barred. This was in reference to the person that he had hit two years ago. So McGregor literally went out of his way to spend an abhorrent amount of money by this bar just so he could get the last laugh in a dispute that should have been settled years ago. If that doesn't scream petty, I'm not sure what does. Number six on this list is Chrissy Teigen. The 35 year old supermodel and wife of musician John Legend had her name in the media for all the wrong reasons when she was called out for a controversial bullying scandal. Courtney Stodden, a 27 year old supermodel, called out Chrissy for an array of bashful tweets and messages that left her feeling very small. After this came out, several others followed suit and reported that Chrissy had left them feeling worthless, with one individual saying that they even considered suicide suicide after working with her. Chrissy Teigen took some serious time away from the media and it seems as if that was the right choice. She's come back now and is apparently a stronger person. She says that she is over 100 days sober and feels a lot more clear headed. Hopefully all of that is true and that the harsher side of Chrissy is left in the past. Number five on this list is the cheating scandal from Khloe Kardashian and Tristan Thompson. It feels like this is a perpetual story in the media, but once again, it's glaring its ugly head in 2021. Back in March, Khloe posted a really cute Instagram photo of her and Tristan with their kid at a fancy event for Tristan Thompson's birthday. The couple looked really happy and she captioned the picture, the ones that are meant to be are the ones who go through everything that is designed to tear them apart and they come out even stronger than they were before. Thank you for showing me everything you said you would, for the father you are, for the best friend I have in you. I'm thankful I can do absolutely nothing with you and it feels like everything. Well, I'm happy that you feel that way, Chloe, but clearly Tristan did not feel the same. Only a few months later, the pair broke up again when Tristan was seen entering a bedroom with three other women and was apparently parading himself as being single. Apparently now, the pair aren't fully back together, but they're spending lots of quality time together. So we'll see how that develops in time. Number four on this list is Yoan Griffith and the whole incident with his family. Yoan has been in countless movies and TV shows over his long career and his ex-wife Alice Evans is no stranger to movies and TV either, having been in her own fair share of things. Well, on January 6th of this year she tweeted out, Sad news, my beloved husband slash soulmate of 20 years, Yoan Griffith, has just announced he is to leave his family starting next week. Me and our young girls are very confused and sad. We haven't been given a reason except that he no longer loves me. I'm so sorry. So yeah, that was a lot guys. Now, first thing I would say about this is that when reading this now deleted tweet, you can tell that she's upset. And I mean, rightfully so. Her husband of 20 years is completely leaving and you have a right to be hurt. She does say that he doesn't give her a reason and I hate to say, 
but I do think he does. Not loving someone, in my mind, is a pretty sizable reason, but I can only imagine that after 20 years, that has to be a heartbreaking blow. Now, what has not been confirmed is whether he was leaving his daughters as well, or just wanting to separate from his wife. So we still don't really know about that, but this scandal has actually recently got a development too. Alice Evans has accused Yoan of having an affair for three years while they were together. Whether that's true or not, we're gonna have to wait and see. Number three on this list is Kanye and Kim. You had to know that it would be on this list, but the split between Kim Kardashian and Kanye West sent waves through the internet when it happened. The pair had been married for six years. However, rumors started to surface about cracks in their marital foundation. This all came bubbling up to the surface when footage of Kim was released where she was crying to her sisters, why am I still in this? Like, place where I'm stuck for years. Like, he goes and moves to a different state every year. I have to be together so I can raise the kids, you know? She goes on to say that Kanye deserves somebody that can support his every move and go follow him all over the place and move to Wyoming. Wyoming. She says, I can't do that. I feel like an effing failure that it's like a third effing marriage. Obviously, Kim wasn't happy to be losing another marriage, but realized that it was in her best overall interest. The split was civil. However, some lines from Kanye's album Donda allude to a lot of mistrust in the relationship. Clearly, this marriage had been flawed for a while. I mean, Kanye lived in a different state than Kim for most of the time, and they barely saw each other. Not really the romantic foundation that a marriage should be built off of. Number two is Britney Spears' conservatorship case. Back in 2008, the pop star's career was put in the hands of a legal guardian due to her mental health being severely in question. The agreement had her father control her estate and other aspects of her life. Now, this was intended to help Britney as she went to rehab and got her career and life back in order. However, she has come out and said that her father has done quite the opposite that she was apparently drugged and forced to perform against her will, that her father prevented her from having more children under this thing. Basically, that he was running every aspect of her life and she couldn't live like this anymore. This sparked the social media to come to her aid with a whole movement that was meant to free Britney. Very recently, this goal was accomplished and her power-hungry father was stripped of his title and thankfully, Britney was able to get her freedom back. The whole thing is just so icky and I, for one, I'm really happy to see her getting some control back in her life. Number one on this list is the ongoing lawsuit against Shia LaBeouf. The former Transformer star has been in the tabloids for some time now due to a lawsuit filed by his ex-girlfriend, FKA Twigs, in regards to behavior during their relationship. Now the abuse that she was suing him over dealt with emotional and physical stuff that spanned their entire dating history. LaBeouf was dating Margaret Qualley at the start of 2021, but that didn't last very long, and amid all of these rumors circling him, the couple went their separate ways. It should also be noted that the actor has recently been dropped from several films and projects that he was supposed to be scheduled to work on. It seems like the common theme here is that his mental health is not where it needs to be right now. Substance abuse also seems to be a common topic in this lawsuit and from others that have reported inappropriate behavior from the actor. Only time will tell how this lawsuit develops and if LaBeouf will be able to right the ship and, and hopefully get himself clean. And at number 10, Hilaria Baldwin. 2021 started off with maybe the strangest scandal ever surrounding Hilaria Baldwin's background. After a long string of events, it was revealed that Hilaria Baldwin is not actually Spanish like she claims, and in fact her name isn't even Hilaria, it's just Hillary. And it seems that she put on this fake Spanish persona to be more interesting and unique in the media. It was also revealed that her Spanish accent is most definitely a lie too, because neither of her parents have an accent. As Twitter began searching for the truth, it emerged that she was, in fact, actually born and raised as Hillary, not Hilaria, in Massachusetts. And her roots are American for many generations back. But then in an interview, she claimed she moved here from Spain to go to NYU, a complete lie. In response, Hilaria addressed the situation saying she was raised with two cultures, but she never actually commented on why she lied, although she did later admit she is just a white girl. And at number 9, Jamie Lynn Spears. Since the Free Britney movement started to get mainstream attention, fans have been wondering why her famous sister, Jamie Lynn, never publicly did or said anything to support her while under the conservatorship. Britney has egged on her fans, telling them that she hates everyone in her family, including her sister, Jamie Lynn. After Jamie Lynn started getting hate, she responded, quote, 
Maybe I didn't support her the way the public would like me to with a hashtag on a public platform, but I can assure you that I've supported my sister long before there was a hashtag, and I'll support her long after. But Britney has been clapping back. In one caption, she wrote, quote, I don't like that my sister showed up at an award show and performed my songs to remixes. My so-called support system hurt me deeply. This conservatorship killed my dreams. Jamie Lynn has been keeping a low profile ever since. And at number eight, Scott Disick. Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker are the hottest new couple, and they're showing the world how much they love each other. Since the pair got together, they've been partaking in tons and tons of PDA. But things got awkward when Scott was exposed for trashing Courtney's PDA to none other than her ex-boyfriend, Eunice Benjima. Apparently Scott DM'd Eunice, Courtney's other ex, and wrote, quote, Yo, is this chick okay? Bro, like, what is this? In the middle of Italy? Clearly trying to initiate a conversation where they both essentially trash Courtney. But to everyone's surprise, even though it seems that Courtney and Eunice ended things pretty badly, Eunice did not trash Courtney, and he responded, quote, Doesn't matter to me as long as she's happy. P.S. I ain't your bro. Eunice then shared a screenshot of the whole conversation publicly, so it made things even more awkward between Scott and Courtney. And at number seven, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart was at the center of scandal when it was exposed that his personal shopper had been stealing millions from him without Kevin knowing. Apparently, this took place over a long period of time, so the shopper was able to steal more than a million dollars worth of purchases. The personal shopper, Dylan Jason Sire, who started working for Hart in 2015, was arraigned in February on grand larceny and nine other accounts. If you're wondering what kind of things that he purchased, he apparently had over $240,000 worth of jewelry and watches, fine art, and Louis Vuitton bags in his possession. And at number six, Zayn Malik. Zayn Malik and Gigi Hadid were one of the hottest couples in Hollywood during their on and off again relationship. The pair even have a child together named Kai. After her birth, the pair seemed to be committed to raising their daughter together. But after Zayn's recent altercation with Yolanda Hadid, Gigi's mother, the two have split again, this time probably for good. A source exclusively told Us Weekly that it's quote, much better that they have separated. According to this insider, quote, Gigi and Zayn had a very destructive relationship when they were together romantically. And according to the lawsuit, Zayn quote, shoved Yolanda into a dresser, causing mental anguish and physical pain after calling Yolanda an effing Dutch slut. At the time of the altercation, Gigi was not home, but she came back immediately from Paris Fashion Week to address the problem. Zayn pleaded no contest to the charges, but later said in a statement that he adamantly denied Yolanda's claims. Now the pair have split and are fighting for custody. Halfway number five, Jake Gyllenhaal. Taylor Swift just released her version of Red, which is an album she wrote back in 2012 while she was heartbroken from a breakup. At the time, fans assumed the album was about Jake Gyllenhaal, but after the release of the All Too Well short film, we're pretty much certain it's about him. In the song, Taylor is agonizing over a past relationship and singing about her heartbreak. Swift, who is now 31, dated Gyllenhaal, who is now 40, for three months in late 2010. She then channeled her emotions to make the hit album Red in 2012. Taylor also released a short film along with the new 10 minute version of the song and cast Dylan O'Brien, who is 30, and Sadie Sink, who is 19, in the All Too Well short film, which is a very similar age gap between her and Jake Gyllenhaal during their relationship. Taylor called out Jake in the line, quote, and I was never good at telling jokes, but the punchline goes, I'll get older, but your lovers stay my age. This line especially hits hard since Jake is currently dating a woman who is 16 years younger than him. In the song, she sings that Jake Gyllenhaal claimed that they might still be together if they were closer in age. And at number four, Simon Cowell. The legendary American Idol host is known for turning everyday singers into stars, but his label Psycho was recently exposed for being toxic towards their artists. John and Edward Grimes, known in the music world as Jedward, went on a tweeting spree and spilled the beans on Simon Cowell and his record label. The pair said that Simon and his label have been taking advantage of artists for years. We were also reminded that other artists like Cher Lloyd and Rebecca Ferguson also spoke out about the bad conditions that they've worked under while with Psycho. In their tweets, Jedward called the One Direction members survivors because of what they've had to endure. And at number three, Tristan Thompson. Tristan Thompson has been exposed for cheating on Khloe Kardashian many times over the years, and sadly, 2021 was no different. In the beginning of the year, an Instagram model revealed that she slept with Tristan while he was with Khloe. This made it the third time that Tristan was exposed for cheating. The model named Sydney Chase claimed that she slept with Tristan Thompson in January, and he claimed that he was single. But she added, quote, It happened, and then I found out that he was not single, and I cut him off. 
After the news went viral, she addressed it again in a TikTok where she apologized for disclosing private information, but also said she was not lying and Tristan had reached out to her multiple times. She said in the TikTok, quote, the last time we had contact, besides when he messaged me after finding out about the interview, it was the day after his daughter's birthday party. Following the scandal, Chloe and Tristan broke up, but it seems that Chloe is still defending him online any chance that she gets. And at number 2, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis shocked the internet when they openly revealed that they don't bathe their kids unless they are visibly dirty. They revealed this on the Armchair Expert podcast with Dak Shepard, saying they only gave their kids baths as infants when they could, quote, see dirt on them. Apparently, Dax agreed with the statement and responded, quote, When I had children, I also didn't wash them every day. I wasn't that parent that bathed my newborns ever. Adding that people, quote, should not be getting rid of the natural oil on your skin with a bar of soap every day. Kuna said the decision related to her poor upbringing, saying she didn't shower much as a kid and she basically turned out fine. And finally, at number one, Army Hammer. Army Hammer is definitely the celebrity that's been exposed the worst in 2021, and it's looking like his career is over because the allegations against him aren't really something that you can come back from. Hammer shot to fame in his roles in Call Me By Your Name and The Social Network. He was also born into incredible wealth, and his family runs many massive billion dollar companies. But that all came crashing down after multiple women accused him of disturbing allegations, with many expressing that he had scary fetishes, and many times he would take things way too far with women while intimate with them. There were even rumors that he could be a cannibal. As a result of the string of allegations, Army has stepped away from an upcoming film with Jennifer Lopez called Shotgun Wedding, as well any project that he was due to be part of has cut him. And with the seriousness of these allegations, he could very very well even be getting jail time for his actions. And at number 10, Josh Duggar. This year, Josh Duggar was found guilty and will be sentenced to jail for his heinous crimes. And not only is his career gone, but his entire family has turned their back on him, rightfully so. As of now, he's not been given a sentence, but he's facing up to 40 years in prison. The former reality TV star, known as a sibling on the show 19 Kids and Counting, was sentenced and will be charged in Arkansas. I can't exactly tell you what his charges are because they are truly that terrible, but he was charged with receiving and possessing illegal content of minors. After the guilty verdict, Duggar's lawyer said that they intend to appeal it, which I hope does not get accepted. Duggar has since been taken into custody, but his sentence has not been determined. Since the guilty verdict, Josh's sister, Jana Duggar, has also been arrested on similar charges. And at number 9, Gary Busey. Gary Busey was exposed this year for being in financial ruin. He's essentially bankrupt and owes the government thousands of dollars in unpaid taxes. Thankfully, his legal battle has determined that he will not have to pay creditors that have been pushing him for payment, which amounted to roughly $57,000. He also got to keep $26,000 worth of assets. However, Busey will still have to pay the roughly $450,000 that he owes to state and federal taxes, as they are not taken away in bankruptcy cases. Busey told TMZ about going broke, quote, when you have too much, it's a good feeling to let go. My new hobby is just breaking even. And at number eight, Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin's career is on the verge of being over after he accidentally shot two people on the set of the movie Rust, killing cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Following the tragedy, the movie has been trying to piece together what exactly happened to cause this to occur. Blame has been placed on the assistant director, along with the armorer, but it seems that the set was full of safety concerns almost as soon as it started, and it was later discovered that other cast and crew members walked off the set before the shooting because of safety issues. As of now, the movie itself and Alec Baldwin are being sued by a number of parties. It's difficult to say how at fault he was in the situation, but at the end of the day, he is the one that fired the bullet. Until things are sorted out, he should not work on another project again. Although now he is claiming that he didn't even pull the trigger, which some people are debating. And at number 7, R. Kelly. I've avoided talking about R. Kelly for as long as possible on the channel because his crimes are so terrible, they're hard to talk about. But after years of being in court battles on September 27th of 2021, R. Kelly was officially found guilty on nine charges, including charges of kidnapping, bribery, and many counts of exploitation. Kelly will remain in custody pending sentencing, which was set for May 4th of 2022. For decades, people have been coming forward against the rapper and his incredibly problematic behavior, especially towards women. Some even claim he ran a cult, where other men along with Kelly would take advantage of women in a vulnerable state. As of now, he's facing decades behind bars and is entirely blacklisted from the industry. And at number 6, Erica Jane. Erica Jane truly had it all. She was filthy rich, had a loving husband, and a phenomenal career as a real housewife. 
but that all came crumbling down this year when she filed for divorce from her husband, and it was exposed that her entire life was basically a fraud. Erica's husband was all-star attorney Tom Girardi, known from the Aaron Brockovich case. But then police and lawyers got involved, and it was exposed that Tom was a fraud and achieved their lavish lifestyle from stealing from his clients. The fact that Tom represented orphans and widows made things even worse, as he was stealing from people that really needed the money. Erica is now being sued left, right, and center, and she might even be facing jail time. She spent the entire season of the show fielding accusations about her involvement, but over time the fans and fellow cast members have turned on her. As of now, she's basically alone, fighting off lawsuits and criticism on the internet, and the fans of the show have definitely turned on her after the last reunion. Halfway number 5, Travis Scott Following the tragic Astroworld festival, it will be shocking if Travis Scott continues to have a career. At first, it looked like Kylie Jenner might be leaving him following the incident, however she's apparently standing by him ahead of their second child's birth. But fans are speculating this could be all for show, and Kylie just might leave him after the birth. It's clear that Travis is taking no responsibility for the festival that took the lives of 10 concert goers and injured hundreds of others. As he recently said he was not responsible whatsoever in his interview with Charlotte Maine, and claimed that he didn't know of anything that was happening. As of now, Travis is looking at billions of dollars worth of lawsuits, so at the very least he will be going broke following the tragedy. After the festival fans realized this problematic behavior was not a one-off, and Travis had encouraged rowdy and dangerous behavior multiple times in the past. This has caused a lot of longtime fans to turn on him. And at number 4, Jesse Smollett Jesse Smollett was best known for his role on Empire at the time of his scandal, although he wasn't a household name. But his fame exploded to new heights when he alleged that two white men who were wearing mega hats attacked him, shouting racist and homophobic slurs. The whole world supported him and he became somewhat of a figure against racial hate. Until it was revealed that it was all a lie, and he actually paid two men to attack him. After he was exposed, he was served several lawsuits from the city themselves for faking a police report and wasting the city's time. On February 11th of 2020, Smollett was charged by a Cook County grand jury on six counts pertaining to making four false police reports. And he was, of course, blacklisted from the industry. He was just found guilty of his crimes and will be serving time behind bars. So his career and everything he has worked for is now gone over a stupid lie. In at number 3, Jen Shaw The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City just seems to be getting better and better, and the drama with cast member Jen Shaw is not going anywhere anytime soon. Weeks ago we saw Jen get arrested during the show, now we get to see Jen fighting for her freedom. Shaw was arrested by the feds on March 30th of 2021 for allegedly ripping off elderly people in a telemarketing scam. She's facing charges of conspiracy to commit wire fraud and conspiracy to commit money laundering with a max sentence of 30 years in prison if found guilty. Initially it seemed that Jen was tipped off that the cops were coming for her and that's why she suddenly left the planned trip. By now she's claimed that she's completely innocent and the cops have gone after her for no reason. But the cops just don't choose someone to investigate for months and then arrest in a sting operation, so clearly they have some serious dirt on her that might put her behind bars. And at number 2, Chris Harrison Before his huge scandal, Chris Harrison was known as the legendary host of the Bachelor franchise. But he was caught up in a major scandal in 2021 after contestant Rachel Kirkconnell was exposed for racially insensitive actions. In the midst of this, Harrison took part in an interview with fellow Bachelorette Rachel Lindsay, where he spoke about the scandal. During that interview, Harrison was very aggressive towards Rachel Lindsay and defended Kirkconnell for seemingly no reason. One of Harrison's controversial statements included, quote, I've heard a lot of, I think she should, I think he should, who the hell are you? Who are you to demand that? People found his comments to be insensitive and many said he was too quick to defend a contestant accused of racist actions. Chris ended up apologizing but was later cut entirely from the franchise, which was a huge deal to the Bachelor fans. And finally at number 1, Zayn Malik Zayn Malik and Gigi Hadid were one of the hottest couples in Hollywood during their on and off again relationship. The pair even had a child together named Kai. But that was all taken away from him after reports that he got physical with his mother-in-law Yolanda Hadid. According to an insider, quote, Gigi and Zayn had a very destructive relationship when they were together romantically. According to a lawsuit, Zayn, quote, shoved Yolanda into a dresser causing mental anguish and physical pain after calling Yolanda a quote, effing Dutch slut. At the time of the altercation, Gigi was not home, but she came back immediately from Paris Fashion Week to deal with the situation. Zayn pled no contest to the charges, but later said in a statement that he adamantly denied Yolanda's claims. The pair have now split for good and are fighting for custody of their daughter, along with Zayn and Yolanda fighting in lawsuits. And at number 10, Travis Scott. 
After the recent Astroworld Festival tragedy, it might be the end of Travis Scott as we know him. While Travis was performing at the sold out 50,000 person festival, concert goers rushed to the front of the stage, causing mass panic. People were crushed and not able to breathe. This resulted in the death of at least 10 people and injuries to hundreds of others. Since the festival, Travis Scott, along with the venue and concert promoters, are being sued for billions of dollars. Drake has also been named in a number of the lawsuits. Travis has released some statements and even a video apology, but fans are extremely extremely disappointed and believe he should have stopped the show. Videos have even surfaced of Travis looking right at the crowd while someone was being resuscitated and many believe he saw what was happening and just did nothing. Following the tragedy, Travis is flooded with lawsuits and no venue will ever want to host a concert of his again. And at number 9, DaBaby. DaBaby endured probably the worst cancellation of 2021 after he made homophobic remarks while on stage performing. He paused his performance and said in part, quote, If you didn't show up today with HIV, AIDS, any of them deadly diseases, that'll make you die in 2-3 weeks, put your cell phone light up. Adding that ladies can put their cell phone lights up if their privates, quote, smell like water. Then making derogatory comments about men hooking up in the parking lot. After the comments were made, the rapper faced backlash from fellow performers as well as fans. His collaborator Dua Lipa even made a statement condemning him. The rapper was supposed to be headlining the final day of Lollapalooza, but he was later dropped, along with getting pulled or dropping out of countless other festivals. He's made countless statements and apologies since, but fans have not believed any of them. And at number 8, Matt Damon. Matt Damon got cancelled after he revealed in an interview that he only recently stopped using the F slur in conversation. He thought the media would praise him for the decision, but everyone was just wondering what took him so long. During an interview, he shared a story about how his daughter urged him to stop using the F slur, as it is homophobic. Damon claims he only used it as a joke and never in a hurtful manner, but that his daughter's words resonated with him and he decided to stop. But that instantly backfired with people calling out the star for ever saying it in the first place. Damon then tried to clear the air and clarified that he never actually said the F slur in the first place. He only heard it back when he was a kid. Damon said, quote, I never called anyone that word in my personal life, and this conversation with my daughter was not a personal awakening. I do not use slurs of any kind. But it seemed to be too little too late. And at number 7, David Dobrik. David Dobrik used to be classified as one of the most successful YouTubers ever, known for giving away cars to his friends. But that all changed when Trisha Paytas started hosting the Frenemies podcast and went after David and his crew. Shortly after Frenemies started bringing up David's worst moments, an insider article dropped where a girl shared her story of being assaulted by Vlog Squad member Dirty Dom. The woman also accused David of facilitating the toxic environment that led to her assault. But that's not all. Around this time, it was also exposed that he was responsible for an accident that almost took the life of his good friend, Jeff Wittick. Jeff was partaking in a stunt for David's vlogs, but it went horribly wrong, and David took things too far, leading Jeff to have serious, life-threatening injuries to his face and eye. David took a long break, but is posting to YouTube once again. And at number 6, Chrissy Teigen. If you guys remember, Chrissy Teigen went through a massive cancellation after it was revealed that she bullied multiple celebrities over the years on Twitter, even coming after children at some points. Her main target seemed to be Courtney Stodden, who spoke out against Teigen and her harassment many times. All of her unearthed tweets were incredibly disgusting and made the entire internet turn on her. Chrissy decided to leave the internet for an undisclosed amount of time to reflect on her words and actions, but the time she took away only turned out to be a measly 23 days. She couldn't even pretend that she was actually going to change her ways and work on herself. Her return to the internet was not taken well, and many of her fans have stopped supporting her. She also just got backlash for hosting a Squid Games themed party. Many think it's ironic because she would be the rich person paying to watch in the real show. Halfway number 5, Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato received massive backlash after they attacked a small business on Instagram. After Demi visited a frozen yogurt shop in LA, they were shocked to see that there were multiple sugar-free and low-calorie options at the store, which Demi believed promoted diet culture. Demi decided to take their anger to the internet, where they blasted the shop in an Instagram story. But the shop clapped back on their own Instagram and said that they cater to all different types of diets, and the snacks that Demi saw were most likely for diabetics or people with celiac disease. After this, people started attacking Demi, saying they should have known all the facts before attempting to cancel the shop, especially in the midst of a pandemic which hit small businesses the worst. And at number 4, Erica Jane. I have been following this one since day one as I'm a huge fan of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. One of the cast star ladies, Erica Girardi aka Erica Jane, shocked the world when she suddenly decided to divorce her husband, all-star attorney Tom Girardi. But then police and lawyers got involved and it was exposed that Tom was a fraud and achieved their lavish lifestyle from stealing from his clients. The fact that Tom represented orphans and widows made things even worse as he was stealing from people that really needed the money. Erica is now being sued left, right and center and she might even be facing 
facing jail time. She spent the entire season of the show fielding accusations about her involvement, but over time the fans and fellow cast members turned on her. She is still on the show as of now, but facing bankruptcy with all her lawsuits. And at number 3, Justin Timberlake. After framing Britney Spears was released, fans realized just how horrible that Justin was to Britney during their relationship. The documentary centered around Britney's terrible treatment in the media and how the people in her life contributed to this. One of the people that made the media treatment worse was her boyfriend at the time, Justin Timberlake. His worst offenses were speaking about their love life when that was something that Britney wanted to keep hidden, along with insinuating that Britney cheated in his Cry Me a River music video. But Timberlake was not only exposed for treating Britney badly, but his handling of the infamous Janet Jackson Super Bowl scandal also resurfaced because Jackson's career was essentially ruined after the incident, but Timberlake got away scot-free. In response to all the backlash, he posted a lengthy apology to Instagram. Although many felt it was forced by public pressure, not really genuine. And at number 2, Morgan Wallen Country singer Morgan Wallen was swiftly cancelled this year after he was caught using the N-word on a security camera in February. Wallen was already on thin ice with the public after he left the SNL crew scrambling to replace him as the musical guest on the show when he broke quarantine guidelines before his appearance. At the time the footage was released, Wallen had one of the most successful country albums ever made. But after the incident, he apologized, saying, quote, I'm embarrassed and sorry. I used an unacceptable and appropriate racial slur that I wish I could take back. The public was so outraged that his music was blacklisted from radio stations, and he was taken off Spotify playlists. Since the scandal, he has started touring again and still breaking country music records, although he is still banned from a lot of award shows. And finally, number one, Sia. Sia is known for being a massive pop star, belting out insane vocals. But this year, she decided to try a new venture out, most recently directing the film Music. But this film might have just destroyed her career. The movie was released in February of 2021, and even before its release, it was already getting widespread criticism. The film is about an autistic girl who is brought under the care of her half sister after the passing of their mother. Originally, it faced backlash for casting Maddie Ziegler to play music in the film when she is not autistic. But after its release, it was criticized for not accurately portraying those on the autism spectrum, as well as showing harmful and dangerous restraint methods in the film that were widely condemned by those in the community. The film currently has a 14% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, and Sia was forced to apologize for Maddie's portrayal in the film. Kicking off this countdown list number 10 is Miss South Carolina. During the 2017 USA pageant, Caitlin Upton entered the competition in hopes of earning herself a new title. But instead, she became an internet sensation after she rambled a bizarre answer during the interview portion of the pageant. The question was, recent polls have shown one fifth of Americans can't locate the US on a world map. Why do you think that is? She started off by saying that some people in the nation don't have maps, and then went on to make other incoherent statements. This was part of her response. I believe that they should, uh, our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S. Or, or should help South Africa and should help the Iraq and the Asia. You could tell that she was nervous and it is very hard to watch because you can see it in her face that she knows what she's saying. Doesn't make any sense. The words just like are not coming out right. If it makes you feel any better, Caitlin, you answered it better than I probably would have. Like in all honesty, I would have been worse. Coming in next number 9 is Megan Trainer. Back in 2016, the pop star was performing on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon and was killing her performance for her single, Me Too. She was doing the entire dance number in heels and she was smashing the choreography. But when it came to just standing at the end of the performance, that is where she seemed to struggle. At the end of the song, she goes to walk up to the microphone and she completely wipes out, landing on her back on the floor. Megan was a really good sport about it and just lied there on the floor like a starfish, laughing at herself for what just happened. But Jimmy was an even better sport. He actually walked up to her, lay down on the floor, and joined her. And they just laughed together on the floor. Cruising into the number eight spot is Michael Bay. The Transformers director was speaking at a Samsung press conference conference in Las Vegas back in 2014, but had a teleprompter malfunction that went down in history. When he got on stage and started his speech, the teleprompter malfunctioned and the timing was really off. So he had a really awkward improv moment that ended with him just walking off the stage during the live performance. He was on stage with Samsung executive Joe Stinziano at the time, who was trying to get the conversation back on track, but the whole thing was just super awkward and painful to watch. Do is I, as a director, I try to. Uh, the type is all off. Sorry, but I'll just wing this. 
Tell us what you think. Not long after, he apologizes and just books it off the stage. And does not return, by the way, to finish his appearance that he was probably hired and paid to do. Signing number seven is Christina Aguilera. She doesn't have any embarrassing lip syncing moments because let's be honest, her voice is iconic and she probably hasn't lip synced a day in her life. Well, that is what I like to think anyway. But one of her embarrassing moments was when she was singing at the Etta James Memorial Service. Her vocals were on point, but the cameras couldn't help but capture the fact that she had something dripping down her leg. At first glance, people were concerned that it might be blood, but turns out it was her self tanner. It's common for tanning sprays to run when you combine like heat, nerves, hot lighting, anything. It just so happened to come at the worst possible timing for her. And number six is John Travolta. He embarrassed himself at the 2014 Oscar Awards when introducing one of the performers. He was introducing Idea Menzel to sing her hit song from Frozen, Let It Go. But when saying her name, he said Adele Dezim, which I can't express enough, sounds nothing like Idina Menzel. Animated movie Frozen. Please welcome the wickedly talented one and only Adele Dazeem. Adele Dazeem. Luckily, the camera quickly cut to her to start her performance, but that did not stop everyone from getting a good laugh at the fact that he just butchered her name. Turns out he didn't know anything about her and felt bad that he actually got her name wrong. You might be wondering how she felt about the mistake. Well, the following year at the Oscars, she got back at him and purposely said his name wrong when calling him up on stage with her. The two of them were able to laugh it off and they ended up getting a French bout of it. So, whatever, Adele Dazeem. Halfway through our list, we got Skepta. This one isn't totally his fault, but many people think he could have handled it better. He was performing his song Shut Down at the 2017 Brit Awards when the live broadcast decided to mute the audio periodically throughout his performance because of his vulgar lyrics. People were angry with the decision because his performance was after 9 p.m., so they did not think that it was necessary. But throughout the performance, he kept laughing, he was losing the beat, and he completely improv the ending, which made it all just an Awkward performance. He can't control that they audio muted some of his performance, so that part is unfortunate. And I'm sure he would admit that it did not go as planned. Moving along to number four, we have Jennifer Lawrence. No one could have handled this as well as she did. And to be honest, I will probably be telling the story to my grandkids one day. If you saw it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The time that she tripped up the stairs when she was going up to receive her Oscar award. She had just been called up to the stage to receive the Best Actress Award for her role in Silver Lining Playbook when she tripped and caught herself while going up the stairs. She was able to laugh it off and accept her award, but explained what happened and said that she remembers her stylist telling her to kick and walk, meaning kick the dress out while you walk, but then she got distracted and forgot. The dress tucked under her feet and she just went down. It was game over from there, but she did handle it like a champ. In the third spot on our list is Mariah Carey. There's no denying her talent and the fact that she can really sing, which is why the world was shocked when her live New Year's performance was such a disaster. She was asked to perform at the iconic Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve with Ryan Seacrest, and during her performance, her audio cut out, and she was caught lip syncing her lyrics. So she started making jokes to the audience saying they did not do a sound check rehearsal. And rather than singing it herself, she just asked the audience to sing for her. Like she would start singing live for five seconds and then just stop for like a minute and a half and just like let her audience sing. The next day after seeing all the backlash she was receiving for apparently lip syncing, her team released a statement saying that there were audio issues and that her in-ears weren't working properly. Snipe the number two spot on our list is Steve Harvey. Can you guys imagine being the host of a competition and then announcing the wrong winner on live television? Well, poor Steve has to live with this horrible memory because it happened to him back in 2015 when he was asked to host the Miss Universe pageant. As the host, you only have one job on the finale night and that is to announce the winner. He proved to be a reliable host for three years, so people were shocked when he announced the wrong winner and didn't realize it until after everyone was already celebrating her win. He announced that Miss Columbia had won the competition, but then realized that she was the runner up and the actual winner was Miss Philippines. Runner up is Colombia. He had to walk back on stage, take back her crown, and then tell Miss Philippines that she is not in second place, she's in first. The whole thing was super uncomfortable to watch, and you can't help but feel heartbroken for Miss Columbia, who literally just thought she won the whole thing. 
and like was celebrating with her family in the audience and, and then you just took that back. So awkward. Finally, in at number one, we have Elon Musk. There was a lot of anticipation for the big reveal of the Tesla Cybertruck. One of its special features was the armor glass that it has, which is supposed to be unbreakable. Elon Musk was doing a live demonstration to show how strong the glass is and asked the lead designer, Franz von Hausen, to smash a metal ball into the car window. I think it's better if you guys just see it. Oh my God. Well, Maybe that was a little too hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's so embarrassing, and obviously that was not what Elon was expecting to happen. And the worst part is he asked him to do it again on a second window, and the same thing happened. The second window smashed. The highly anticipated demonstration was a total fail, but he later explained what happened and showed other video clips of the demo actually working. What happened was, before doing the window demonstration, he did a door demonstration where he hit the door with a sledgehammer. Because he did this before the window, it cracked the base of the glass where it connects to the door. So, you're forgiven. Starting off our list at number 10 is Mark Wahlberg. Back in 2013, he appeared on the hit UK show, The Graham Norton Show, which is always a party. But Mark showed up to this party a little too tipsy. He was doing the interview with two other people, one of them being the comedian Sarah Silverman. He ends up interrupting her in the middle of her story and drunkenly crawls into the host's lap. It's not like he could hide the fact anyway, but he openly admits to being drunk and says, why would you allow people to drink alcohol and come on a show in the evening? He even starts rubbing Graham's nipple as he sits on his lap. And then he kind of makes out with Sarah at one point, which is really awkward and weird. Next up at number nine is Jessica Simpson. She showed up drunk to do her interview on The Ellen Show, but some people didn't realize it was actually a lot deeper than that. Back in 2017, we saw her do an interview where she was acting a little bit strange. Jessica later confessed that she was actually drunk during the interview and says that she can't even look back and watch it. It was that bad. She didn't just show up drunk to have a good time. She was actually dealing with an alcohol addiction and called it a weak moment. She said, I can't even watch the interview. It was a weak moment for me and I wasn't in the right place. I'd started a spiral and I couldn't catch up with myself. And that was the alcohol. She didn't do anything embarrassing on the show. She just was acting a little irrational and saying things that didn't make any sense at all. Sliding into spot number eight is Tracy Morgan. Remember that time he took his shirt off and then started slapping his bare belly and calling it a loaf of bread? I don't have what LL got. I got, I don't got biscuits. I got a loaf of bread. Come get this, ladies, you gonna eat. He was being interviewed by TV host Robert Holguin and he deserves a round of applause for keeping it together during this interview because it was an absolute disaster and I probably would have lost my cool. Tracy's drinking problems from his past have always been a public conversation, so it wouldn't be all that surprising to know that he had a few drinks before he went on set that day. If you watch the full interview, it's clear to most people that he is not sober, but some people did argue that he's just naturally funny and a little bit weird. You're just not convincing me that he's not drunk during that interview, guys. I mean, he's slapping his bare belly and talking about biscuits and bread. Rolling to number seven is Fergie. Back in 2017, she crashed the stage at the Trevor Live Gala, which was a charity fundraiser put on by the Trevor Project. Now, when I say she crashed the stage, I mean that she literally just showed up on stage out of nowhere and interrupted Army Hammer, who was speaking. He reacted by taking a step to the side and just kind of letting her take over the microphone and do her own thing, which he learned quickly that it was a big mistake. She went on this like four minute rant, which was extremely awkward and obviously alcohol induced. <sighs> This is not a shameless promotion. I have a lot of shame. She took desperately long pauses, promoted her latest single, and also began singing at one point. But rumor has it that you cannot find the second part of the clip because her team had it removed from everywhere because she started singing and uh, it was that bad. 
yeah, trust me, I tried to find it, show you guys. <laughs> Could not find it. We're moving on to number six, and we have Mariah Carey. This singer set the bar for drunk acceptance speeches. It was back in 2010 when she took the stage at Palm Springs International Film Festival to accept an award for Breakthrough Actress. She won the award for her time in Precious and was standing with Lee Daniels by her side. It was a happy occasion, rightfully so, but it was also a very, very drunk occasion. Not only is it one of the most drunk celebrity speeches, but it's also the longest. No, I don't think that's what you could take my makeup off. Or I don't look like that from the thing. Oh, God. <laughs> she was trying to get out some very inspiring but drunk cliches, and she was slurring her words and laughing at her own jokes. Regardless, though, people still clapped for her. I would have too, she looked like a blast. Happy through number five is Tara Reid. The sweet blonde actress shocked the world after showing up drunk to an interview or so it appeared that way. Back in August, 2018, she did an interview with Today Extra on Australia's Channel 9 to promote her movie, The Last Sharknado. But throughout the interview, she was slurring her words, spoke very quietly and often trailed off like as if she was falling asleep. When you watch it, there's moments where it legit looks like she fell asleep. It's one of my favorite places, but I thought, oh my God, to shoot in Australia, you guys have the sharks, it would be amazing. Well, you know, we have like, some real have shots here yeah, that we could. After the interview aired, rumors started claiming that she was drinking again, which has been a problem in her past. But she released a statement afterwards, not giving any kind of excuse regarding her strange behavior, but insisted that people had no reasons to worry about her health. However, um, people were still worried. Uh, she did not look sober during that interview. In spot number four is Courtney Love. Only she would crash someone else's interview and completely steal the spotlight with her drunk antics. Way back in 1995, Madonna was being interviewed at the MTV Music Video Awards, but it was interrupted when yelling in the background caught her attention. The interviewer, Kurt Lauder, saw that it was Courtney Love and actually invited her on stage because she was causing a scene. She was obviously intoxicated and it went down as one of the weirdest train wrecks ever caught on an MTV camera. Not gonna lie, it's, it was super awkward. <laughs> she just crashed a party that she was clearly not invited to, but they had to because she was yelling like a crazy person off stage. Sniping our third spot is Drew Barrymore. You probably didn't expect to see her name on this list since she is known to be one of Hollywood's biggest sweethearts. And she still is. She's not really an obnoxious drunk. She's kind of like a cute drunk. She was promoting her film Miss You Already with her co-star Tony Collette on the Alan Carr show when she appeared to be a wee bit tipsy. She told a raunchy story about her and Michael Stipe, but then clarified that the only thing he gave her was music. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you don't drink on talk shows. I think I just figured it out. Any foof, it works. She admitted to being drunk though and joked about it saying, this is why you don't drink on talk shows. I think I figured it out. <laughs> she was pretty composed though, I gotta say. For being drunk, she kind of held it together. Just a little giddy, but I mean, she was no Courtney Love. Let's just say that. Taking over the number two spot is Kanye West. People will never forget the time that he stormed on stage during Taylor Swift's acceptance speech and took the microphone from her hand and declared that Beyonce should have won it instead. There's actually been an ongoing debate that he was drunk when he did it. Most people's initial reaction was that it was Kanye just being Kanye, but people have come forward saying that he was seen taking swigs of Hennessy on the red carpet before the show. Kanye himself never blamed his stunt on alcohol though, even if it was a factor for his behavior. Uh, he doesn't care, he owns it. And to be honest, alcohol is not really an excuse for that. And our number one spot is Paula Abdul. Back in January, 2007, the American Idol judge did an interview that went viral instantly. Throughout the video, she slurred her words, swayed, and spoke a bunch of nonsense. News anchors from Q13 Fox News Live streamed Paula from New York to do a live interview with her, but because of how she was acting, they thought that there was like a connection issue. She was closing her eyes, slurring her words, and just kind of acting all manic and weird. Looking forward to the season. How about a lot of you coming in? <laughs> it's, a, it's a wild party where you are. 
That, yeah, that's what we hear. <laughs> Later, she tried to explain, saying that there was a connection error at first and that they had a station from Alabama in her ear along with Fox News at the same time. But once they fixed it, she blamed the rest of her erratic behavior on being tired. She said, fatigue and exhaustion just added to the whole thing, looking so disoriented, but no alcohol and no drugs, absolutely not. What do you guys think? <laughs> Do you believe her? I mean, I've been extremely tired, like hadn't slept in like two days. And girl, I ain't acting like that, so I don't know. And at number eight, Ben Affleck. Now this one gets a little creepy. During a Ben Affleck interview in 2004 with a French Canadian reporter where he was promoting his new movie, Jersey Girl, which is also just an amazing movie, side note. During the interview, Affleck was just straight up acting really gross, commenting on the cleavage of the interviewer and asking why she covered up for him in this interview when, quote, her d**ks are usually out. There was also this really strange moment where they were like cuddling on a couch and he keeps saying just really creepy stuff. Like I had serious secondhand embarrassment for the both of them. Many blamed his shameful behavior on him most likely being drunk. However, in 2017, the video resurfaced and the interviewer came out saying that the whole thing was actually staged and that people shouldn't feel bad for her as everything that happened was fully consented by her. And since this is a really strange thing to admit to years later, that makes no sense at all. Kind of called BS here. But even if it was staged, he was probably still, you know, at least a little drunk. And at number seven, Danny DeVito. This next one is lovable comedian Danny DeVito. The interview actually starts with DeVito admitting that he was hungover AF as he was out drinking with George Clooney the night before, I guess a humble brag there. He also said he had seven limoncellos right before the interview and that they were finally catching up to him. He then starts talking about President Bush and making crazy facial expressions and noises to like imitate him. Then when he literally looks like he's gonna fall asleep, Sleep or pass out. Rosie O'Donnell brings him over to cuddle with her. Honestly, Danny DeVito is the best, and this interview just made me love him even more, you know? And at number six, John Stamos. John Stamos is someone that I think a lot of people could see themselves, you know, cutting loose and having a drink with. And if you want a sneak peek into how he might act on a night out, look no further than an interview that he did on an Australian morning show. In the start of this clip, it's pretty obvious that he's been drinking, and after the interviewer makes a comment about it, he admits that there's straight up vodka in his glass. Then John Stamos goes off on a reporter that called him out for being tired after his long flight. And when the host claims that he can't take criticism well, John says it was all just a low blow. Then when they start talking over each other for a bit, John looks off camera and yells, she won't let the guests talk. Which was a bit rude, but you know, very true in the moment. Then at the end, he gets the name of the paper and tells his fellow Greeks to not buy the paper. So it's safe to say he made, you know, quite an impression down under. Halfway through number five, Bill Murray. Bill Murray is known for being one of the most iconic comedians of all time. But you might not have known that he also holds the spot for one of the most legendary drunk interviews of all time too. In 2015, he appeared on David Letterman's TV show where he is seen taking multiple shots of vodka on air. But that's not the story though. Where things get crazy is when Murray then goes on to MSNBC during a live broadcast and interrupts Lawrence O'Donnell's segment while it's live on air. Then when he finally sits down to wait to go on the show, he completely falls off one of those high chair stool sort of things onto the ground. Then during the interview, he slurs like crazy while trying to answer some questions and pretty much there's absolutely no doubt that he was wasted. And at number four, Steve-O. Jackass prankster and wild child Steve-O definitely lived up to his jackass reputation on Comedy Central's Too Late with Adam Carolla. And it's a pretty common thing, especially with comedians, that they'll drink before an interview and usually before a comedy set too. So Steve-O ended up getting so wasted backstage that during the interview he started yelling a bunch of swear words while also spitting and later in the segment attempting to rugby tackle the show's host Adam Carolla to the floor. Steve-O at one point also fell over, shattering a glass coffee table with his foot and slicing his leg open in the process. Ouch, that must have hurt. When Corolla tried to laugh off the craziness and like rescue the show, it was proved that Steve-O could not be tamed and at the end had to be escorted out by security. After the insane interview, Steve-O said that he woke up and had no recollection of ever being on the show, but that he was insanely proud of himself for how funny it ended up being. And thankfully that kind of thing is like very on brand for him because if a more chill celeb were to have done that, I'm sure their career would have taken a major hit. And at number two, TJ Miller. Well, TJ Miller, the funny man in Silicon Valley, was on Colbert for an interview. There was no doubt he was absolutely sloshed. It starts off very uneasy with Miller talking about how Colbert is his wife's favorite comedian, which is obviously a little awkward because, you know, 
Miller himself is obviously a comedian. And during the interview, he is just so annoying that Colbert genuinely looks like a little ticked off. At one point, Miller is trying to make a joke about the Critics' Choice Awards, and while everyone is incredibly confused, he smashes an egg on his face. And he finishes the segment by touching Colbert with his creepy, like, skeleton hands. But clearly, Colbert pokes some fun at Miller. And the YouTube video of the segment is called, quote, So Things Got Weird with TJ Miller. And this is why I cannot help but love Colbert. Like, even with that, I'm sure, very annoying situation, you know, he still made a joke out of it. <laughs> Also, I wonder whoever had to like clean up that egg, they probably are not a fan of TJ Miller now, let's just say that. And at number 10, Miley Cyrus. This one is the most recent wardrobe malfunction. While Miley was on stage performing during her New Year's Eve special that she was hosting with Pete Davidson, her tiny strappy shirt broke during the performance, and thankfully she was able to catch it before it was a live TV disaster. Miley caught the falling shirt, turned around to expose her bare back, then started walking off stage while still performing. The cameras panned to the musicians playing on stage, and within seconds, Miley was back on stage performing in a different outfit, although the red blazer that she came back on stage with was almost as revealing as the other one. Hopefully Miley stylists learn their lesson with that outfit. And at number nine, Sarah Jessica Parker. Well, on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, SJP embraced the rips on her beautiful dress and laughed it off while showcasing the rips to the audience. Well, on the show, she wore a green velvet Alberta Ferretti gown dress with a touch of lace on the parts of the dress. After Andy complimented her on the dress, she admitted that she tore multiple rips in the sleeves of the dress. She said, quote, I love the dress, I borrowed it. This is in no way reflects on the house of Ferretti. Most celebrities would have done everything possible to cover up the imperfections in the dress, but instead she embraced it, believing that they added character to the look. She added, quote, I kind of dig this. It does something to this dress. And at number eight, Cara Delevingne. Unfortunately, Cara Delevingne has had a few wardrobe malfunctions in her day that exposed quite a bit. The latest was when she was featured on the Friends reunion special when she modeled an iconic dress from the show. The cast of Friends were overjoyed to see Delevingne walking out in a recreation of the very tacky bridesmaids look that Jennifer Aniston's character Rachel wore to her ex-fiance Barry's wedding. It's a bright pink Pepto-Bismol-esque dress and a matching hat that is one of the poofiest I have ever seen. Rachel wore the dress in the season two finale, which was titled The One with Barry and Mindy's Wedding. In the episode, Rachel suffers a wardrobe malfunction, and when she steps out in the dress, her bright red panties are exposed. Delavine copied the exact same scenario and exposed her butt in some bright red panties that were also caught in the dress exactly the same way that Rachel's had been. And at number seven, Nikki Hilton. Nikki Hilton wore a risque gown with see-through panels that ended up showing off her entire backside while she was walking up the stairs. On July 5th of 2015, Hilton attended the Versace fashion show in Paris, but it's clear she didn't practice going up the stairs in the dress because photographers got some photos of her bare butt showing in the see-through parts of the dress. The mishap happened days before she got married to her fiance, James Rothschild, at the Kensington Palace. And since she was walking a red carpet into the venue, there were tons of paparazzi snapping photos of the awkward blunder. And at number six, Jennifer Garner. Thanks to celebrities like Kim Kardashian being open about their use of shapewear like Spanx, this wardrobe malfunction is a lot less embarrassing than it would have been back in the day when women pretended they didn't wear these things. While Garner was on the red carpet for a premiere of a new movie, she was posing with co-star Steve Carell when she accidentally lifted up her own dress and exposed her Spanx to the world. The premiere was for the movie Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Garner was wearing a little black dress by Valentino featuring a multi-layered tiered skirt. Garner was trying to get the perfect pose when she put her clutch to her side. The only problem was she didn't realize she was grabbing at her dress at the same time, which exposed basically everything underneath her dress. Although I'm sure she was glad she was wearing Spanx that day and didn't show off her underwear. Halfway number five, Janet Jackson. The Janet Jackson Super Bowl incident is easily the most famous because it happened live during the Super Bowl halftime show, notoriously the most watched event in America. At the 2004 Super Bowl, the phrase wardrobe malfunction was coined after her nipple was exposed because of a faulty costume, or intentional stunt, we're not really sure the true story. During the performance, Justin Timberlake clearly took a hold of her shirt and ripped off the part right above her breast. Following the scandal, Janet Jackson took all of the heat, and the public lashed out at her for months even though it was clearly not her fault. And Justin Timberlake was responsible for the entire incident, like he's the one that grabbed the shirt. 
The Federal Communications Commission even took CBS to court, seeking nearly $600,000 in fines for the scandalous halftime performance. Both singers issued apologies shortly after. And at number 4, Charlie XCX. Charlie XCX had a COVID wardrobe malfunction in the comfort of her own home, so thankfully she was able to refilm the incident and it wasn't actually put on live TV. However, because she likes to make fun of herself, she posted the clip on her own Instagram after the awards went live. During the ARIA Awards in November of 2021, Charlie presented an award to Justin Bieber and The Kid Leroy for their single, Stay. In the mishap after she waved goodbye, the strap of her dress slipped and her breast immediately became exposed. She was obviously shocked and tried to cover herself up as soon as possible, but because it wasn't really live, she was able to laugh it off. She re-recorded her presentation without any nip slips for the actual show, but thankfully she shared the clip to social media so we could all enjoy it. And at number 3, Lil Nas X. This one is my personal favorite for 2021 because it happened on SNL where the cameras basically never cut. During this May 2021 performance, he was singing his latest hit, Montero Call Me By Your Name. While performing incredibly intense dance moves, he was wearing very tight pants. And I'm sure you can guess where this is going. At one point, he started to pole dance, and that's where it all went downhill. But halfway through the pole performance, Lil Nas X grabbed for his uh, private areas to cover them up after the rip, making sure nothing had shown on television. After the performance, he tweeted, quote, I know I do a lot of planned sh but ripping my pants on live television is not one of them. In at number two, Cardi B. With all the scandalous outfits that Cardi wears along with her dancing, it's not hard to believe she landed on this list. Cardi has actually had a few wardrobe malfunctions go down over the years. One time while she was performing at the Bonnaroo Festival, her jumpsuit ripped right around the zipper and exposed part of her butt to the crowd. Right as it happened, she told the crowd, quote, I just wanna let y'all know that my outfit ripped. But that didn't stop her from twerking and she continued to perform the set as if nothing happened. Once the rip got too big to ignore, she simply covered it up with a bathrobe, which she wore for the rest of the performance. At one point, it even looked like the bathrobe might have a malfunction of its own. And finally, number one, Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle proves she's just like the rest of us when she was caught still having the tag on a new dress that she bought. While she was getting off the plane in the kingdom of Tonga, paparazzi caught that the tag was still attached to her red self-portrait dress on October 25th. The tag was at the very bottom of the dress, so it's understandable why she didn't notice it beforehand. I don't think anyone was able to see the price because I wonder how much her dress has cost. I mean, that's what I'm interested in. Meg was pregnant and on a tour through that region for weeks beforehand, so she was probably just too tired to check.